All right, so the first um, cause of heteroscedasticity is following the error learning models, okay? And as, um, let me explain it again, following the error learning models, we need to understand the learning curve theory. The learning curve theory states that the more an individual takes up a tax, the lesser the error the individual would make if the individual were to repeat that tax. That is the learning curve theory. If that is the learning curve theory, I said, assuming we have an individual that is a fashion designer and the individual is planning to make dress, let's assume the individual went to training school on how to make dress between October, November, and December last year. So if the individual goes to school to learn how to make dress between October, November, December last year, then January this year, the individual starts to make dress. And I want to examine the impact of individual's income on consumption. If I want to examine the impact of the individual's income on consumption, what happens? The first thing I will do is I will take a monthly data of the income of the individual between January this year to say December this year. If that is the case between January this year to December this year, please, somebody is using a screen. Please, I'm seeing different marks on the screen. Please, can you kindly stop that? Please. So the first thing is I will take the data on the individual's income and consumption pattern from January to December. Remember, the individual started learning how to make dress last year, October, November, and December. And then this year from January down to December, the individual has started sewing. So let's assume for January, the individual will try to make dress. You and I will believe that because it's our first month of learning how to make dress, she might only be able to make two dresses. And when she makes that two dresses, assuming she collects an income of 5,000 naira per dress. That means our income for January is 10,000 naira. That is the implication. Now, remember that in February, the errors she made in January, she wouldn't want to repeat it again. She might not be able to straighten the cutting of the clothes, or she may make errors in ironing, or she might make one or two errors. So that means that the error she would make for January, okay, might not be the same for February. And because of that scenario, the error she's going to make in February is different from that of January. We expect that she might make more clothes for what? For February. That means in February, she might succeed in making just three clothes. That's the implication. So if she makes three clothes in February, she gets an income of 15,000. Imagine when she continues this process. That means that in the month of October, November, December, she might now make 20 dresses, and that is what? 100,000. If that is the case, look at her income in January, 10,000. Look at her income in October, November, 100,000. If you estimate that model, definitely you wouldn't expect the variance of the error term to be constant. Because if you break that particular analysis from January to February, another one from January to June, sorry, another one from July to December, you will discover the variance you will get between July and December will not be the same with the variance you will get between January and what? And June. That means that the variance of the error term for January to June is different from the variance of the error term for July to December. So the concept of heteroscedasticity, all right, is stating, um, sorry, please, just one minute, please. All right, so that means that the, if you follow that pattern, it therefore means that the error 
that is committed between January and June is different with the error committed between July and December. And that is heteroscedasticity. What happens as the style or technique of improving on your skills, all right, enhances the error you make will decline. So as the fashion designer gets to know more about how to sew, definitely the error she's making in January won't be the same with that of October. The error she makes declines, the income will grow, and you expect heteroscedasticity to occur. Look at point two. As income grow, people have more discretionary income. Let me explain that again. I um, remember that if you are examining the relationship between income and consumption, for example, you are a fresh graduate. You started um, work. You're on a salary of 150000 You will notice that the share of your consumption to that 150000 will be large. Of course, transportation, feeding, um, rent, and other expenses. You might end up spending 120000 of that particular work, of that particular expenditure, of that particular income. Now, assume or assuming that after that scenario, you get promoted and you become maybe a senior researcher or an executive, um, maybe assistant director or something, that your income now grows up to 600,000 or 800,000. You, will, you and I will agree that the income you are going to spend, your consumption pattern from that income will not be as much as when it was when you earned 150,000. So if when you are earning, say, let me say 100,000, you spent 80,000 of your income on consumption, that is 0.8, 80% of it. When you start earning 800,000 or 1 million, the income you are, your consumption are going to spend will definitely not be up to that particular 80 p you make or sorry please Can you hear me, please? Okay. Let me just share the screen. Questionary your spending. And so we do not we do not expect that you are going to spend. You are going to spend all. You are going to spend. We do not expect that you are going to spend all of your income, all right, on consumption because immediately your, your income starts growing, okay? Your consumption pattern will definitely reduce. You will therefore need to focus more on say, oh, I need to build a house, I need to invest, I need to save for my family. I need to do this. I need to do that. You will start thinking of other things to do. I need to. All right. I believe you can hear me. Okay. So if that is the scenario, okay. It means that as the income of the individual is, you are definitely going to do what? Expect your proportion of your consumption to decline. And once your proportion of your consumption declines, what happens? Your error term or the error you make, okay, will definitely change and it will no longer be constant. The third one is as data collection technique improves, the variance of the error term decreases. Of course, assuming you are collecting your data from a known source 
and probably you used survey to collect your data. And remember, when you use survey to collect your data, you go out, you administer questionnaire. Some people who might not understand the type of questions asked. Some people would unwillingly feel what is not required. Some people will feel some answers that you can't even interpret. When you use that data to estimate your model, the accuracy of that data, all right, will be, will be questioned. Assuming you now decide to improve your technique of collating data, say by administering your questionnaires online using a Google form. If you try that particular scenario, what do you think will happen? You will definitely get substantial and reliable data from the what? From the field. And it therefore means that the estimation you will conduct using that particular data online and the estimation you conduct using your field survey by going to the field will no longer have the same results. And at the same vein, the variance of that error term will be different. The variance of the error term when you decided to go out on a field survey by administering your questionnaire, you know, face-to-face -face correlation will be larger than the variance of that you have when you administer the questionnaire online. What does that mean? It means that the variance of your error term, okay, for the questionnaires collected face-to-face -face is larger than the variance of your error term for the questionnaire collected on online. Why? The error you committed face-to-face -face will be more than the errors committed real time online because in the online you have partitioned or you have pre-ordered information you need to get and so anybody that does not feel in, feel into that particular uh, conditions no data or no information will be collected for the person you will discover that you'll be more accurate under that particular method because when you go for field survey you collect the data you will record it an attempt of recording and coding you will make errors that means your errors in that particular point will be large. Remember that we're talking about the variance of the error term. So we are examining, are there possible scenarios or are there factors that will make your error term, the variance of your error term, to be smaller than the variance of your error term, okay, in another scenario. So whatever that makes your error term to be smaller, as against whatever that makes your error term to be larger, two of them will not have the same variance, okay? The third one, heteroscedasticity can also arise as a result of the presence of outliers. Yes, when you have outliers in your model, for example, you have a case whereby many people, many people are um, um, have an average income of say 100,000 and you just see one person, only one person, that has an average income of say a million naira or 800,000. That's an outlier. That's an outlier. The same scenario happens. You want to estimate a model of students in year three, economics department, an average, their monthly stipend is say 30,000, 32, 35, 28. You now see someone that is monthly income, average income is 1 million. That particular person is what? An outlier. By the time you conduct the variance, you conduct analysis and look at the variance, you will discover that they can't be the same. Then we also have incorrect model specification. And in current, under the incorrect model specification, I've explained last two, year, um, last two weeks, for incorrect model specification, we are considering the um, case of incorrect functional form or um, um, incorrect functional form or the second um, one is um, 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 omission of, of, of variables, explanatory variables, okay? When you omit the explanatory variable, of course, the error term will be a function of that particular variable you have omitted. I've explained that last two weeks, okay? 
um um get it um last um week you remember i said if you are to estimate y subscript t is equals to beta zero plus beta one x one plus beta two x two plus the error term this is what you are to estimate and instead of you to estimate this you now estimated yt is equals to beta zero plus beta one x one plus your error term let me use um vt as this error term plus vt what does that mean it means you have omitted this whole of what x2 and once you omit this whole of x2 it means that this um, error term here vt should be equals to what beta 2 xt x2 sorry plus the error term what does that mean it means this new error term that you estimated is a function of an exponential variable and the natural error term this error term is free from um heteroscedasticity but this particular error term is not free from what heteroscedasticity why because as your x increases you will expect this particular error term to also do what increase so when you have the case of incorrect um, functional form omission of variable case you will definitely have um hetero city city all right and the last one is incorrect data transformation this is very um relevant to people that try to estimate a model and they are making efforts to transform their their model for example your series is in the natural form and instead of you to actually um use your series in the natural form you decided to log it and an attempt to log it an attempt to log in it what happens instead of you to log it you did not um log it and what did you now do you 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 um use natural log not the normal log or you divide it by 100 an attempt to transform all of those your data you can commit error and that makes your variance to be what larger okay then the next thing we need to now look at is what will be the consequence of heteroscedasticity in our analysis all right the consequence of heteroscedasticity in our analysis the first one is that our ols will still be linear that is it our ols will still be linear what does that mean all right it means that when we have heteroscedasticity I will say that our OLS estimation will still be linear. We are actually saying that, for example, beta one at is equals to expectation of x y summation x y by summation x square. This x and y, the small letter x and y, is what is the mean deviation. Okay. When we say that if our estimator will still be linear, we are saying that beta one at will still be a linear function of a random variable. Okay, a linear function of a random variable. If you remember in your derivation, you must have been taught you get to a point where you have um, summation k y, where k is equals to x i over summation x i square and if that's the case remember that y y your y is equals to beta zero plus beta one x plus error 10. that means your beta one at should be equals to what summation k times beta zero plus beta one x plus error 10. in this scenario 
your beta one at, which is your estimator, is a linear function of a random variable mu t. That particular assumption will still hold even when there is what heteroscedasticity. Having said that, let's look at another assumption. Will my estimator still be unbiased? The answer is yes, my estimator will still be unbiased. Remember, we say our estimator is unbiased. If the expectation of our estimator can be approximated to the population word parameter. And that is why we say that the expectation of beta one at is equals to beta one. In that scenario, my bias is equals to zero. That is expectation of beta one at minus beta one is equals to zero. And remember I told you that when we say the expectation of beta one at means you have different sample cases, all right? And with those different sample cases, you collate and use OLS to estimate a model. For sample one, you have your own beta one hat. For sample two, you have your own beta one hat. For sample three, you have your own beta one hat. And for sample four, you have your own beta one hat. So you have five betas. The assumption there is that these four samples are coming from a population. And that is why we use OLS and we got four different beta one hats. The assumption is saying that when you find the expectation of those four beta one hats, that is when you find the mean of those four beta one hats, it will still be the same, all right, as the population parameter beta one. When there is heteroscedasticity, go and check your derivation of your unbiasedness. If you check the derivation of the unbiasedness from beginning to the end, you have been taught in the previous classes. When you check that derivation, you will discover that there is no scenario where you need to assume that the variance of your error term is equals to heteroscedastic. There is no scenario you will need that. So that means it will still be what? Unbiased, okay? If that is the case, let's now look at the next one. The next one is, will we still have the minimum variance? No, it will no longer have the minimum variance. Why? Remember that for minimum variance property is saying that in the presence of other linear and unbiased estimators, the variance of the error term for OLS will be least compared to others. So if I have my OLS variance, the variance of my error term, remember is equals to summation error term square over N minus K. That's the variance of my error term using OLS. If I am to use another method, all right, say any other method. And I will now look for the variance of that particular error term. That variance of that error term will not be something of this nature, okay? It will be something of another nature that will be solved if you check your derivation. The assumption is saying that these are other methods. When your variance is homoscedastic, despite this one is linear, this one is unbiased, your OLS will have the minimum variance compared to others. But when this variance is heteroscedastic, it will no longer have the minimum variance property. Why? When you are deriving your variance of your error term, when you are deriving this, go and check it. Check the derivation. You have been taught. I'm assuming you have been taught. When you are deriving this particular variance, you will get to a point where you assume that the variance of the error term is constant. Once you get to that point, you will get this. But if you do not have this and you have this scenario whereby it is heteroscedastic, 
If we have this scenario of it being heteroscedastic, when you estimate your model and you try to derive the variance of the error term, that variance of that error term, okay, will be larger than this. Why? Because there was a place when you are deriving it, you made an assumption that the variance of the error term is almost scedastic but it's hetero, is more, is many. And with that scenario, it be many, what happens? You would discover that the variance, okay, will not be this, it will be larger. So under the scenario of our OLS, will it still be um, having minimum variance property? The answer is no. Please, the only way you can understand all these consequences is when you know the derivation, of linearity, unbiasedness, and minimum variance. That's the only way. And I believe you have been taught in the previous classes your blue properties. Blue property is not just saying it is linear, it is unbiased, it has minimum variance property. Okay? You must derive it. You must derive it, derive it, derive it. If you can't derive it, I'm sorry, if you can't derive it, I'm sorry, you might not understand when we say it will still be linear, it will still be unbiased, it will still have, it will no longer have the minimum variance. So if that is the case that it does not have the minimum variance, that means your blue property is now what? Violated. Your blue property is now what? Is violated, okay? your blue property is violated. That means it will no longer be what? It will no longer be blue. It will no longer be what? Be blue. That's the implication. It will no longer be blue. It will no longer be a best linear unbiased what? Estimator. Though it will be linear, it will be unbiased, but it will no longer have the minimum variance property. Okay? Having said that, the next consequence is that your standard error will be unnecessarily large. And when your standard error is unnecessarily large, your T statistics will be smaller. And when your T statistics is smaller, you are likely going to do what? Fail to reject your null hypothesis of statistical insignificance instead of you actually rejecting it. Okay? What does that mean? It means that when there is heteroscedasticity, remember your standard error, all right? The standard error of say beta one at is equals to summation, uh, summation what? Uh, sorry, the standard error of your beta one hat is equals to square root the variance of the error term over n summation small x i square. This is the standard error of your beta one hat. And then your T statistics is equals to beta one at beta one at over standard error of what beta one at. When your variance is heteroscedastic, okay, this particular component becomes larger. Assuming it was 20 before, it becomes 35. If this component becomes larger, the standard error of your beta one at will become larger. If the standard error of your beta one at is larger, this denominator becomes larger. And when this denominator becomes larger, T statistics become smaller. And when T statistics become smaller, T statistics, all right, might now be less than two. When it's now less than two, you are likely going to fail to do what? Reject your HO when you are supposed to reject it. That makes 
hypothesis testing misleading and your confidence interval becomes large. So in conclusion, when there is heteroscedasticity, the your OLS will be linear. There's a proof for it. Your OLS will be unbiased. There's a proof for it and derivation. Your OLS will have minimum variance, will not have the minimum variance property again. And your OLS will no longer be blue. And your T statistics will be smaller. This will result to you failing to reject your null hypothesis when you are supposed to reject it. And that makes hypothesis testing misleading. And your confidence interval becomes unnecessarily larger. That is the issue we have. All right. So recall all of this that I have said. Let me look at your charts. All right. Um, ah, can you recall from the standard error of beta one? I said for the standard error of beta one, 